Matthew. That was very nice, Matthew. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. Good. We want to welcome you to our Christmas services. Uh, tonight uh, is going to be exactly like our Christmas Eve service. Um, we wanted to celebrate with our faith family, and I'm grateful for those of you who are here uh, in person. We also want to thank those of you who are on our live stream. We're glad that you've tuned in. Uh, to share together with us. Christmas is so special. Christmas is always special to me. And it's just a reminder of the greatest gift that was ever given. You know, I've been given a lot of gifts in my life. I'm sure you have too. But the greatest gift ever given was in uh, the baby Jesus uh, who, you know, grew up and then was crucified and raised again and now sits at the right hand of the Father so that someday I will be able to be at the right hand of the Father too. So we, tonight we celebrate this great gift. I'm going to pray for us and then we will uh, begin some singing. Father, we just humble ourselves tonight. I'm so grateful for this time of worship together with my brothers and sisters in Christ, both here in this room and also on the live stream. Father, I pray as we gather together, we're just we're reminded, Lord God, of the greatest gift ever given. And that was your son. Lord, you tell us in your word, you, you so loved the world that you gave your one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. And I'm grateful for that eternal life in my personal life, Lord. I just ask you to be in us this time as we sing praises to your name, as we celebrate together. 
In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Our kids weren't able to do um, a Christmas program this year because of this COVID-19 uh, stuff. So what we did, Brittany put together along with Stephen a video. We just brought them in one by one. Um, and I want to share with you just um, before we get ready to sing, just what some of the thoughts were about Christmas uh, in this great video that Brittany put together. So we're going to share this now. We asked our kids some questions about Christmas, and here's what they said. So tell us what you know about Christmas. It's about family and giving. For well, my family, give me presents and Santa give me presents. It's Jesus' birthday, and that's when he was born. It's Jesus' birthday. That it's Jesus' birthday. Baby Jesus being born in a manger, and their parents was Mary and Joseph. It's when Jesus was born, and when God sent his son to the earth, and now we celebrate it every year. Okay, kids, what's your favorite Christmas song? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I'm the Jamlin. Away in a manger. Baby, it's cold outside. Mm, silent night. Silent night. Last Christmas. Okay, guys, here's a hard one. What's your favorite Christmas movie? Christmas with the Cranks. The Drummer Boy. Elf. The Grinch. Frosty the Snowman. The Polar Express. The Grinch. Okay, guys, what's your favorite Christmas tradition? Um, my family eats. Be with my family. Going to my family's house, like my grandmas and grandpas, making gingerbread houses, decorating the house inside and out, secret Santa, picking out a Christmas tree and baking cookies. Kids, what's your Christmas wish this year? Um, the Jeep, the blue one that has songs. If Santa gave me presents, the Jeep, then. He will give me presents and get home. Hanging out with my family. That COVID ends so we can go and hang out with our grandparents. Everyone to be safe from the coronavirus. For this virus to be over with. For COVID to be gone. No more COVID-19. And the very last question, and most importantly, what is the true meaning of Christmas? He, God celebrating Jesus' birth and spending time with your family. To celebrate the birth of Jesus with your family. Just go on to hang out with family and be thankful for things that you have. Jesus' birthday. Christmas is about giving and being nice and spending time together. Jesus came to earth to save us from our sin. As many of the kids mentioned in that video, um, we're here to celebrate the true meaning of Christmas. So would you join with us? We're going to sing a couple Christmas carols. Please stand with us. We're going to sing Joy to the World and O Little Town of Bethlehem. Joy to the world.
to this time of teaching where we're going to dig into your word. I pray, Lord God, that you will open us up and help us to have ears to hear what it is you want to share with us tonight. Lord, there are so many distractions in the world, so many things going on that I pray right now that you will just help us to focus. Because, Lord, it's not coincidence that people are here, that people are watching on the live stream. There's something, Lord God, that whether it's through a song or through a message that people need to hear. And I just pray that we will open our hearts up, we open our minds, focus in on you over the next few minutes, and hear what it is you want to share with us new tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. If you haven't been with us, we have been working on a sermon series called The Picture Perfect Christmas. And as most of us realize, this Christmas that we have this year is going to be a whole lot different than what it was. I was thinking about this earlier in preparation. Think about a year ago. Who would have ever dreamed last Christmas as we were here worshiping together? Who would have ever dreamed that we would be where we are today? You know, in the midst of this, I would have had no idea. You know, this is really the first really holiday that we've been able to celebrate at least some kind of normalcy, even in the life of the church. Um, and so I'm grateful for that. So things aren't picture perfect. And I know we, we really want Christmas to be really special for our family. You know, we go all out. We make sure we decorate the house. We buy the, the perfect gift. Um, we, we wrap that gift really well. We make sure the bows are on it. And everything is picture perfect. But what happens in our life? What happens when things aren't picture perfect? One of the things the kids shared, and I'm so grateful that they were able to, to share with us, is that what is their favorite Christmas program? Well, I have two personally. One is um, Home Alone. I absolutely love Home Alone 1 and 2. Uh, when I was in New York City several years ago, I got to go visit where that really took place. Uh, Home Alone did there in New York City. That was great. And the other one that I really enjoy is uh, Christmas Vacation. I mean, anybody ever seen Christmas Vacation? What a great show Christmas Vacation is. And what I want to think about tonight is when you think about Christmas Vacation, you know, the, that show, the, the main character, Clark, he was so focused on making sure that his family had the picture-perfect Christmas. He wanted to make sure everything was perfect. And if you know anything about that program and that movie, it was anything but perfect. And I just sort of sat down and thought about everything that happened that went wrong that Christmas uh, on that television show. The first thing you see is they're driving down the road. They're going to get that infamous Christmas tree. They're driving down, and all of a sudden they get out there, and they're going to cut it down. Many people don't cut trees down anymore, but some people do. Um, he gets out there, and somebody says, what about the saw? And he's like, oh, no. I forgot the saw to cut down the tree. And somehow, they roots and all, they uproot the tree, and they have the tree on top of the car. One of my favorite parts of that movie is, so they get the tree in, and the tree is literally, you know, up against the, the uh, ceiling, and all of a sudden, he cuts the rope from the tree, and all of a sudden, it goes through the windows and everywhere else. You know, so he wants this picture-perfect thing, um, and all of a sudden, it is no longer uh, picture-perfect. He went on to decorate the house. Um, and this is one another part that I love, and this is something I would personally do. I'm a klutz. Um, but he was putting the ladder up um, to get the lights on the outside of the house, and he's climbing the ladder, and as he gets up there, he's thinking, did I latch the ladder to make sure that it didn't fall? And so what happens is, as you can see him thinking that, and all of a sudden he goes, and, you know, he falls down, um, and the ladder goes crumbling. It's like, oh, man. Then he gets on the roof. Um, and he gets up there on the roof and, you know, he's stapling down all of the lights and everything. And then all of a sudden it had snowed um, and he slides down 
falls and he's hanging on the gutter, you know, instead of being able to get over to the ladder, you know, if, if that wasn't bad enough to slide there and hang on, the, the gutter comes off and he falls down. After all that work that he had done, you know, he'd worked and worked and worked so hard and untangled all of those lights, lo and behold, he gets ready, he gets all the family out there and they're getting ready to, to you know, put the lights, turn the lights on and there's drum roll and he plugs it in and nothing. He wants it to be perfect, he wants it to be beautiful and nothing happens. So he works and works and works and works and works and tries to figure it out. And lo and behold, finds out that it's really a switch that you know, needed to be turned on, whatever. After all of that, um, he had an unexpected guest. And we're going to talk in a little bit about an unexpected guest when we talk about the Christmas story. You know, he has more guests, people they didn't really know that they were going to show up, show up. Um, so there's always, you know, here's the thing. It doesn't seem to rain, but when it pours, you know, you all live life like this. You know, you think, you know, what else, how many times have you said, what else can go wrong? You know, I know I've said that a lot in my life. You know, what else can go wrong? Then all of a sudden the cousin's dog drinks all the water out of the tree and someone catches the tree on fire. This tree that he had literally dug up out of the ground, you know, busted the windows out of the house now all of a sudden the tree's dry and they catch the tree on fire and it looks worse than the Charlie Brown tree. Then at the family meal, you know, they're sitting there, they're hungry. He's been through all of this and he's ready to dig in to the meal. And all of a sudden he cuts the turkey and the turkey's all dried out on the inside. And, you know, and you have to be just like, what in the world, what more can go wrong here? Then his, his bonus. He's waiting all this time for his bonus because he had put money down on a swimming pool and, for the family and he would, hoped his bonus was going to cover that. And all of a sudden, the, the bonus got lost in the, in the delivery guy's car and it, when he finally got it, it was a jelly of the month club. You know, it's like, really? So here he's already put money down on the pool. He's hoping that his bonus is going to cover it. You know, this is a movie... But folks, there, we all live this, we live this sometimes. When things don't work out the way we anticipate or we hope or we have it built up in our mind. So then, you know, he's upset with his boss and he said, if you want to give a gift, go, kid, somebody can bring my boss right here and, you know, kidnap him and I'd like to tell him a few things. So he goes and gets, you know, the cousin goes and gets the boss. Um, and so here's the boss with a big red bow standing in their living room. And all of a sudden, at the, at the end of the movie, you know, the boss is standing there and the family's standing there. And all of a sudden, the police bust through the house. Okay. And bust through the windows, come in, you know, through the house. So it's like, you know, it's like, whoa, now what? What more could go wrong? This was definitely not a picture perfect Christmas. With that in mind tonight, I'm not here to tell you about movies, but what I am here to tell us about is another story, the Christmas story from Luke 2. And our kids came, as they were doing the one video, they also read the Christmas story. And what I want you to think about in the Christmas story, and I'm going to talk a little bit about when I'm done, is think about Mary and Joseph. From Luke chapter 1 through verse 20, we're going to see things that did, wouldn't be picture perfect. It's not the way they would have anticipated they would celebrate the birth of the Messiah. Think about all the things, as the kids get ready to read this, think about all the things that went wrong. Those, those things, it seemed like one after another, Things happen, and then we're going to talk about that. So I'm going to ask if uh, Joe will pull up the kids' video.
and share. Today we're grateful that our kids have come in and shared in the verses that we're going to be reading. Will you listen to the kids as they read our passage from Luke 2 tonight? In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinus was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went to there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, I bring you good news that will cause a great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. Thank you. You will find a baby. And play on cloth. And lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Okay, so thank you again to our kids and our youth for participating in that uh, video together. The thing that caught me this year, I always try to look at the Christmas story in a different way. Every year I try to read it and try to look at it from a different perspective. And one of the things that caught me my eye this year as I was reading was the fact that you think about Mary and Joseph. We almost glorify everything that happened and it was all wonderful and great. And we don't realize Mary and Joseph were just human beings like you and me. And they're going through a very, very difficult time. So here we have Mary and Joseph. Mary is somewhere in the, uh, you know, eight to nine month period of time being pregnant. You know, so you can about imagine those of you who have had children or, you know, your, your wife or your, your daughter, someone's had a child. You can just about imagine at eight or nine months how miserable you are. And then all of a sudden, you get this notice that there is a census to be taken. What a census was, was you had to travel to show, you know, how many people were in your family so they could tax you on that. So there's the census, you know, so we think they have to go to, to Bethlehem from Nazareth you know, that would be just like, okay, they had to walk. They were walking just from here to Williamstown. But that's not what it was. Folks, they had to travel between 60 and 80 miles. And they didn't have a Chevrolet. They didn't have a Ford. They didn't have a GMC to be able to take them there. They had to walk. So here is Mary. You talk about inconvenient. You talk about not the way you pictured things happening but because they wanted to be law-abiding citizens, Joseph had to break the news to Mary. Hey, Mary, we got to go 
we got to walk from here, 80 miles. Okay, let's say 80 miles is walking from here to Charleston, West Virginia. That's how far, you know, those of you who have been pregnant, how many of you would want to at eight or nine months walk, walk that far being pregnant? It couldn't have come at the worst possible time. It would take them between five to eight days to be able to walk that distance. And I just can't even imagine being that pregnant and having to walk that, that journey to Bethlehem just for a census. So then they get there and they arrive and the scripture says, we're not exactly sure how long they were there. It's, you know, we automatically think in our minds sometimes that well, it was the night they got there but it just, the scripture really just says, while they were there, um, you know, we're not sure how long they, they spent there, but they got there and there was no room for them. So it would have been a hustle and bustle time. So, okay, can you just about imagine, all Mary probably wanted to do was put her feet up and to rest and relax and get there and there's no room for them. I don't know about you, but I might have been looking at God going, okay, God, why? Why are you allowing this to happen to me right now? Now there's no room. We've had to travel all this way, and there's no room for me. She did not know. She probably suspected she could have the child en route, but she did not know that she would have the child there. And so she goes and she, you know, finally the child is ready to be born. And it's like, really? God, you, you couldn't have waited till we got back home to a more comfortable condition for me to get back to where I was before you allowed the baby to come? Okay, so now all of a sudden the baby comes. You can't really predict when a baby's going to come uh, unless you have a C-section, and that wasn't an option at that point. Um, so the baby arrives. You know, and those of you who know anything about children, you usually have the nursery ready. You've prepared. You, you have the bed. You might have a stroller, all those things. And Mary and Joseph, they are in really a cave or a barn or somewhere where animals are kept. And, you know, so baby Jesus is born, and what do they do? Where do they place this baby? What do they do about the clothes? You know, the, the, the cloth to go around and make sure he's, he's warm. And they just found whatever they could. They wrapped him in, because it says swaddling clothes, and placed him in a manger. Folks, we don't really understand. A manger is not something you would put your child in. I would say to us, most of us would not place our child in in a manger. It was a dirty hog trough where animals were. We probably wouldn't have placed it, but that's all they had. So they have the baby, they have the census, and then something I didn't think about even until this year was now they got to go home. So now they got to turn around and go that same 80 miles. Not only was she probably tired, not only was she probably miserable after having a baby, but now they've got to travel back home with a newborn child. I mean, you talk about something that wasn't picture perfect. You talk about a night that was like no other. And then one other thing that happened in is an unexpected guest. They had some shepherds that showed up. So Mary and Joseph, they're, uh, they're there. They, the babies come. And now some, some people that we don't even know, some crazy shepherds show up. And they want to worship this baby. You see, there was nothing picture perfect. I, I want to share this with us tonight because I want us to understand that Christmas doesn't have to be picture perfect for us to be able to celebrate the birth of the greatest gift ever given. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be what we think it should be and we have it built up in our minds. 
One of the things, the verses that Jason read, and another scripture that caught me, Jason said in, in one of the verses he was reading, talked about how Mary pondered these things. And, and it made me think, what was she pondering? What, you know, here she's ready to celebrate the birth of her son. What was she celebrating? You know, and what do we have to celebrate this year? Mary, I believe, was pondering and thinking about God's hand that was at work in her life. I think as, as the shepherds came and they confirmed what, what was going on and who this child was and how it was ordained to be something bigger than just a son, her son, she began to ponder these things, but she began to see how God was at work in her life. You know, I think about as she was on that journey, you know, she could have very easily had that child on the way, right? But, you know, at just the right time, while she was probably somewhere where she was probably the safest and the most secure, God allowed the baby to come there. Although there was no room for them, she may have been grateful for the shelter that they did have. And so many times, and I, I've thought a lot about this, sometimes we focus on what we don't have or can't have or want than what we focus on what we do have. You know, as I think about Mary, I wonder if she was sitting there thinking and pondering, Lord, I'm grateful that although, you know, I don't have my family and those people around me to help me, You've at least given me my husband, the man I'm pledged to be married to. At least you gave me Joseph. I'm not alone. And so, and also, okay, God, I'm grateful that I'm at least in this cave, in this place where I'm kept safe. And so I, I think maybe this year, maybe the year we think, okay, maybe Christmas is not going to be like we want it to be but we're grateful for what we have in the midst of that. I believe she was also grateful and pondered the confirmation. Up until this point, the angels had been to Joseph, they had been to Mary, and there was no other confirmation of what this who this child was. And all of a sudden, some shepherds who they didn't have any idea who these guys were showed up in the midst and confirmed what was happening, what was going to happen with this child. And then probably the last thing, we know this baby Jesus was the Emmanuel meaning God with us, that here in the flesh is God, the Son of God, right here in our midst. And I'm sure she had to be grateful for that as well. So for, for Mary and Joseph, the birth, that first Christmas, was not picture perfect. It would not have been the way they would have wanted to celebrate the birth of Jesus. And this year is probably not the kind of year you want to celebrate Christmas th this way. But we have to. And we might need to to keep people safe. But it's still Christmas. It's still a celebration of the birth of the Messiah. Here's the thing that I think we need to ponder. Very similar to what Mary did. And maybe we have some time at this Christmas time to really ponder God's hand at work in our lives. The world around Mary and Joseph, there were things that were going crazy. You know, that it was a busy town, busy community. 
whatever was going on, all the hustle and bustle. It was so busy. But it wasn't so busy that they missed and got the opportunity to be away from that and focus on the birth of Jesus. I think sometimes, I know sometimes, I get so busy at Christmas with all the different celebration, with all the wrapping, with all the stuff about Christmas that I forget the reason for the holiday. Folks, I, I'm guilty of that. I am, and I know I am. And I think all of us are. And so maybe this year, I think God is, God's hand has been at work. He didn't cause this virus, but he's allowed it in our lives. And there's a reason. And I think I've heard one of my dear friends talk about how they have grown, grown more closer to the Lord in this time than they have in any other time of their life. And I wonder if that's true of us. How do we fill our time? She was grateful. I think Mary was grateful for God's hand at work all around her. And, and I think we can be grateful for that as well. Here's what I want you to ponder maybe this Christmas. What if Jesus had not come to earth? What if God had not sent Jesus Christ how would your life, how would my life be different? And I know as I thought about this this week in preparation, my life would be so much different because Jesus is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Barring none, there's nothing that compares to having Christ in my life each and every day. And I thank you. I am grateful that God sent His Son. And that although it wasn't picture perfect, although Mary and Joseph were just normal everyday people, it reminds me that God came to, for ordinary people like me and He came for ordinary people like you. He can relate with us. You know, Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father today and he understands what you're going through. He understands what I'm going through because he was here with us. And as I ponder this year, the celebration of Christmas, I am grateful that I have someone in heaven interceding for me on my behalf who understands exactly what I'm going through. He understands exactly what you go through in your life. And he's there for you. And so this Christmas, let me ask you this question. Are we going to ponder, are we going to focus in on what we don't have? The celebrations we can't have? Or are we going to celebrate the fact that Jesus came to earth and loves me and loves you? And you celebrate the reason, the true reason, for the Christmas time we celebrate. Will you pray with me? Father, we humble ourselves tonight recognizing that Father, without the celebration of Christmas, the birth of the newborn king, without the obedience of without things being picture perfect, even for this family that we celebrate in Mary and Joseph. Lord, they understood and they understand the things that we go through and Jesus does. And I just pray tonight, Father, as we go into this Christmas, it might look different. But just because it looks different doesn't mean we celebrate any less the birth of the Messiah, the newborn King. I just ask you to help us as we ponder that night, that first Christmas night and the greatest gift wasn't wrapped in beautiful packaging. 
But as that scripture says, it was wrapped in swaddling clothes and placed in a manger because there was no room for Jesus. And I pray that we'll make room for Jesus in our Christmas this year. I love you, Father, and I thank you for loving us. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. We typically sing Silent Night, Light Candles, but because of the pandemic, we're not able to, to light the candles. So we wanted to have, Brittany had this vision of, of all of our trees lit up here in the sanctuary and having a little bit different service. So you can't light a light candle tonight, but we can still sing that great song. Several, a couple of kids said, you know, what's their favorite hymn? Silent Night. And it's one of my favorite as well. So we're going to stand. We're going to sing this last song together. Will you stand with us? I pray for your family this Christmas. It may be different. It may not be picture perfect. But you can still celebrate the greatest gift ever given. Thank you for being here in the worship center. Thank you for being on the live stream. I've challenged our faith family over the last two or three weeks. If you would like to give a gift uh, in recognition of Christmas. There's a box over here. You're welcome to give there. If you're on the live stream and you're at home and you want to give on our website, go to our website, firstbaptistmarietta.com. Um, or you can also uh, mail a check to the church um, and we'll post market this year. So we're grateful for this opportunity. 
Um, we'll have another service just exactly like this on Thursday evening, and then we'll be back on Sunday morning to worship together. I'm going to pray. Father, as we close this service, I thank you for the privilege we have to gather. Thank you for this time of reflection and this time of pondering. And I pray we will too, as, as Mary pondered all the things that happened, treasure them in our heart. And I pray that we'll treasure those things as well. Thank you for this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just be seated for just a moment. We're going to turn off the lights and then Lauren's going to dismiss you uh, row by row. Uh, again, thanks for being here.